All right, welcome. In this video, I just want to explore the extendable hashing framework uh, by adding some elements into uh, an empty extendable hashing table. Um, and so I once again just sort of got my random data here. Uh, and I want to start out again, maybe just doing, uh, as I mentioned, an empty table. So when I'm going to write my empty table here, I'm going to start my directory here. Maybe I'm going to put a little dash in there to indicate that there's actually nothing in there. Um, and I'm going to set my global depth here to be zero, uh, which means we're looking at none of the bits. None of the bits. So we really don't need to hash it at all. Everything goes into one bucket. Um, and so I'll just set up my bucket here. Uh, with room for four. So just like in the last video, I'm going to use a lot of the same stuff. My data here is actually all in the range 0 to 30, which is a uh, smaller range. Um, but I'm still going to use, I'm just going to assume I'm, I'm hashing the data directly. Um, and I'm going to just uh, place the data in buckets of size at most four. So again, my local depth to start out of my, my single bucket will be zero saying that all of the entries here agree on zero bits, meaning no bits, which means we can put anything we want in there. Uh, and so it looks like we, we start off doing that. We're going to put 11, 4, 21, and 25 in there. So that's an easy get started. Um, since we have room for four entries in our bucket, we put the first four entries in our bucket. Okay, keep going. Um, so if we get our 15 here, adding our 15 here, would, this is a full bucket. So what we actually do in the extendable hashing framework is we pause. We say, okay, we don't add the entry in. Uh, we want it to, it's full, so we'll try and do a split. So we try and start doing the split. The split says first check to see if our local uh, depth is uh, less than our global depth. It's not, it's equal. So we pause again. And we say, okay, what do we do? We do a directory grow. So a directory grow means we're going to grow the directory by doubling it up in size. And usually what that means is I'm going to put a leading zero and a leading one in front of whatever I had written in there. Now I just had a dash written in there, so that meant nothing. Okay, so I'm actually just going to rewrite these uh, just to make space in case we do it again. And we actually also do double up the pointer as well. Okay, so uh, after the directory grow, our global depth is 1. So we paused our split operation in order to do that directory grow. So now we can do the split. So for our split, now what we need to do is we need to look at each of our entries and determine which bucket they belong in. And what we can see here is this split's going to be not too hard. Hopefully this is just even odds, right? We need to know, do we end with a 0 or a 1? Well, even odds, let's quickly go through 11, 21, and 25 are all odds. So they all belong in the odd bucket. And after the split, the uh, local depth of our two buckets is increased to 1. OK, we had paused our add. Our add was for 15. Our 15 is now odd, so it goes in the odd bucket. And we continue. Okay. 14, that's an even one, goes here. But looks like we're a little bit odd heavy in this example. So next we get a one. Odd goes into our odd bucket. Well, our odd bucket was already pretty full. So again, we want to trigger a split. Uh, unfortunately, bucket split can only occur if our local depth is less than our global depth. So we need to double up our directory. Now doubling up means copying down from above the 0 and the 1, but also doubling up the pointers. And remember, I, I used to say put the leading zeros here and the leading ones here. If you've done it right, it should read out the binary numbers in order, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. In so doing, we increase our global depth. Uh, now we can carry out the split on our odd bucket again. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now this split, we might need to look a little bit closer. Uh, again, we might, for each of our numbers, we could, on our scratch, write down, okay, 11. What's 11 in binary? Um, it's, again, depends on how, how frequently you work with these values. Uh, it's an 8 and a 2 and a 1. So we could write that down. We could see, oh, it's a 1-1. One, one. So 11 belongs here. What about a 21? 
Well, 21 is a 16, a 4, oops, and a 1. It looks like it's a 0, 1. Okay, so it stays up there. What about 25? Okay, 25. Now, if you're clever, you know that 21 plus 4 is 25, so it should still be a 0, 1 as well, but it's this one here. And what's our last one? 15. Well, 15 is another easy one, hopefully. It's all 1, so 15 actually ends up down here. Okay, so after our split, uh, we've got our two zero ones remaining in the zero one case, our two one ones going into the one one case, our local depths increased to two, and now we can add our one. Let's be careful, our one is a zero one, so it goes here. Okay, moving on, nine. What's our nine? Well, again, this depends on how you want to think of it. It's mod four, that gets us in here. Or look at the last two bits. 9, right? So last two bits are 0, 1. So we'll put it in here. Okay, good. Hey, an even number, 20. Even numbers, look, it actually doesn't matter. The directory cares what the last two bits is, but this bucket doesn't. So if we're looking ahead, if we're a little clever, we see, oh, 20 goes here. We already know that. But maybe we should, hey, what is 20? 20 is a 16 and a 4. Yeah, oh, it's a 0, 0 actually. Okay. Um, and then what else do we have here? 2. Well, 2, that's an easy one. It's just a 1, 0. Well, 1, 0, the 2 goes here as well. Okay. 17. Again, might as well write them down while we're at it. That's our 15 here. Our 17 is a 16 and a 1. It's a 0, 1. 0, 1. Oh, no. That's a full 1. Now, it looks like a lot of odds, but now it's a lot of odds that are equivalent to 1 uh, mod 4. That's been causing us problem. Okay, so let's, let's see uh, what we got with that. Well, let's take this set here. Uh, well, first of all, we want to split this set here. But what's the first step we need to do? We need to check our local depth. Oh, no. Local depth 2 is equal to our global depth. So that means, once again, we're doubling up. Made enough space here. Now I'm going to copy down. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. In front of the old ones, 0, 0, 0, 0. In front of the new ones, 1, 1, 1, 1. Global depth becomes 3. And now we need to double up our pointers as well. So this one points here. And one here. And one here and one here. Notice all of our buckets have doubled up their pointers. This one that was for our evens before has now got four pointers on it. Okay. However, which one we were trying to split this bucket here, now our local depth is less than our global depth, so we can do the split. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So let's go through this one here. Now let's again be careful. Now that we're getting up to three bits wide, what are we doing? So before we had a bunch of a bunch of elements that we knew ended 0 1 but we weren't sure about that next next bit there that's what, what it was well what we'll notice now we used to be doing mod 4 well we're kind of doing mod 8 now if we want these three bits then if we knew they were 0 1 mod 4 then they must either be 0 0 1 or 1 0 1 that's either 1 or 5 right and we see that indeed the extra bucket that we've got here 101 is bucket 5 okay so for each of our bits now or sorry not each of our bits each of our entries here are keys we need to know mod 4 or sorry not mod 4 mod 8 is this going to be a 1 or a 5 mod 8 okay so again if you're good at your mod 8s, you might be like, okay, uh, 21 is 16 plus 5, so it's a 5. So we can see here that's our first one here. But we might also go look up at 21. We already wrote it down. Hey, it's 5. Okay. What about 25? Oh, no, no. It's 1. 25 stays where it is. What about 1? That's an easy one. It's also a 1. Stays where it is. What about 9? We looked at 9. Oh, it's a 1 as well. So it looks like the only 5 we got was this one here. And maybe I should be careful. My local depth is now 3. So let's fix our other bucket. So 25, 1, and 9 stay place. And 
and we've increased our local depths to three, but we haven't finished our add yet. Remember, we were trying to add 17. It was a 001 following it in. Oh, we now have space, luckily. But it, we're, if we get another one of these 001s, we're, we're in trouble. Uh, let's keep going here. 26. Uh, our 26 then, again, maybe we just want to write it down. We know it's even. It's got to follow one of these fours in here. We're probably going to split. But if we're going to split, we might as well write it down, right? 26. Okay. Well, that's a 16. Okay. Keep going. We get an 8. That's up to 24. So no 4, a 2. Okay. So it looks like it ends 1, 0. Follow our, our 0, 1, 0, I should say. We go in here. Oh, we're full. Okay. So we want to split. Uh, can we check? Our local depth is less than our global depth. So yes, we can do a split. So let's go ahead. Let's do a split. All right. So when we split it off, what we'll notice is we need to be careful. This old bucket only agreed on one bit, which means they had a zero in that location. And we're looking at the next bit, which means we're looking at either zero, zero, or one, zero. Now we had we're up to three bits over here on our global directory. So we actually had four pointers before. We had 0, 0, 1, 0. Sorry, we had 0, which is 0, 0, 0. We had 0, 1, 0, which is 2. We had 4, which is 1, 0, 0. And we had 6, which is 1, 1, 0. And what we see when we do the split is we need to be careful that the pointers for the 0, 0, 0 and the 1, 0, 0, the 0 and the 4, those go to the first bucket. And the 0, 1, 0 and the 1, 1, 0, the 2 and the 6, go to our second bucket. And that's because they have to agree, remember, on those two bits. This one will now agree on two bits too, once we transfer them down. Now, again, what that means is, we're, even though on this upper level we're concerned we might have 0, 0, 0, and 1, and 0, 0, uh, uh, ones and zero one zero sorry and uh, ones one zeros all these different combinations on the eight bits that's concerned with mod eight remember but here we're only worried about mod four so when we look at each one of these ones we're still just going to go mod four and see where they belong now four mod four right where it belongs right for my mod four is zero so it belongs there notice four mod eight is four but that pointer is still pointing here so that's why we belong here okay so the four is where it belongs but the 14 mod four is a is a two okay mod eight it's a six but again the six pointer points here okay 20 mod four that's uh that's zero right so it belongs where it is and two mod four not where it belongs so let's fix our original bucket okay now after the split uh, our, our 4 and our 20 remain in the original bucket, 14 and 2 move down below. Our local depths of both buckets were increased by 1, but there's still only 2, which means we can still split them if we want to. Okay, um, that's great. Uh, if we need to, let's keep going. So let's try our 3. Now our 3, now we need to know mod 8 what that is. Well, 3, let's maybe put it over with our other ones. 3 is an easy one. It's a 1, 1 or 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, if you like. Uh, it goes uh, right here, fits fine. 7, 7, well again, let's check it out. 7 is a 1, 1, 1. They sort of match each other, right? Well, that pointer is also pointing here, so let's throw our 7 in. Okay, so far so good. Let's try our 24. 24 mod 8, remember mod 8. 24 is 3 times 8, so it's 0. So we get here. And it looks like our last value here, 30. Uh, 30 mod 8 is a 6. Follow our 6, we get here. All right, I think that was a pretty good warm up and practice for working with extendable hashing. Uh, if you want more practice yourself, I recommend you do just what we've done here. Uh, grab yourself some random numbers, something in the range of 15 to 30 is a good uh, set to work with. Uh, use the same parameters that we've been using. Use uh, uh, four, four uh, entries per bucket um, and, and see, see what you can do. Practice it up. Okay? In the next video, I'm going to take a look at our other dynamic hashing uh, framework, which is a linear hashing model, which has very many similarities to this model, 
uh, but has a couple critical and important differences. So in the next video, uh, I'll introduce that model and we'll practice with it again in a future video. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.